I have to admit, lately I've really been trying to get myself into the mindset of the audience that I'm trying to reach. You know, because the audience I'm trying to reach isn't just people who already agree with me, right? Like, I don't really need to try to get people who already agree with me to subscribe to my channel and watch my videos and, like, you know, support me. That's not exactly a hard thing to do. They already agree with me. It's convincing the people that are on the edge and even, like, completely hostile to my ideas that's particularly difficult. And the only way you can actually do that is by understanding why they think the way they do. Something that I think I have going for me is that I was once a viewer of this type of content. I was once one of the people I'm trying to appeal to. And believe it or not, not much has changed. Well, a lot did change, but then it went back, I guess. You see, back in the day, there was this big event online called Gamergate. Now, this event is looked back on by different types of people on the internet in completely different ways. Some see it as an entirely horrible thing, some see it as a gray thing, some see it as a completely morally justified thing. Most people who see it as a completely morally justified thing are pieces of shit. I will throw that out there, but, uh, you know, hear out, my, uh, hear out my reasoning. I was one of these people. I think I can reason out why. Not only I when I was younger, but a lot of the people that are watching very similar content today during, like, very similar to what was coming out during the Gamergate period, um, what's appealing to them about it? And what made that old content fail? Because, look at this. This is the Quarterings YouTube channel. Um, I mean... L look at this shit. We've got the government dropped the case against me with like the SJW screaming picture from the uh, from like 2014 or whatever. I don't know what this is about. I, I guess the government dropped a case against the quartering. I'm going to guess this is clickbait considering the fact that uh, the quartering's not a very uh, honest guy. Here he's got a video. The Little Mermaid backlash has Trevor Noah in full meltdown and displaying insane hypocrisy. So I guess this is going to be the quartering. Actually, we're not going to get into what the content of these videos is, probably is, or the background. I feel like they should stand for themselves. Like, just the, the thumbnail and the titles alone. Um, Rings of Power tanks after premiere, down 50% after the first two episodes. Amazon panics. Uh, so we've got, like, more hate-mongering. Uh, the Little Mermaid, migrant, ba back, migrant Backlash, The Woman King, and Kyle Rittenhouse Revenge. So if, if any of you guys are curious about whether or not this guy is a overtly conservative channel, then there you go. She-Hulk hits embarrassing new low as the critical drinker reveals unknown fact. Wait, is this what those people in- Wait, this is what people in chat were telling me about before. Apparently critical drinker claimed that she-Hulk was supposed to come out before Miss Marvel, but didn't because of reshoots? Because, like, the production was a, supposedly a shit show, and apparently there is no actual evidence for this. Like, like there is no actual citation or official evidence of this as far as I've been made aware. Um, so this is literally just a bunch of grifters deciding to just get together and, you know, we all make money if we just decide to lie. Um... Yeah, no. Uh, the Critical Drinker, by the way, is the guy who made a video saying nobody gives, nobody cares about House of the Dragon like two months before it came out. And then after it came out, um, he went back and he changed the title of, a, title of his video so that he wouldn't look as stupid because he'd done a bunch of stuff saying House of the Dragon would suck, it'd be woke, no one would care. And then um, he had to change the narrative because now it's House of the Dragon versus the Woke Rings of Power show. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, doesn't surprise me that they're in cahoots. Rings of Power showrunners busted for paying for positive reviews from YouTubers. Okay. Uh, yep, that's right, guys. I got paid by- I wish I'd gotten paid by Amazon. Holy shit. Can you imagine if Amazon paid me and I got to, like- I wonder if they got to see the whole show first, you know? I wonder if the YouTubers who got paid to watch, uh, and review the show got to see the whole thing first before everyone else. That would be nice. Uh, 
<laughs> this is probably not true, I'm going to guess. G4 TV, surprise, fires almost entire staff and ga gamers dance on their graves. I Is this him saying it's good that these employees got fired? And saying that, uh, uh, okay... Because gamers, when he uses gamers in his titles, he he likes gamers. Gamers are his side. When he says gamers, he means, like, his audience. Like, the conservative, like, white, cishet, 14 to 17-year-old gamer boy type, you know? You know the type. Gamers. Capital G, hard R gamers. But uh, anyway, okay, listen, we're getting, like, sucked down a rabbit hole, okay? We're getting sucked down a rabbit hole into just how ridiculous all this content is. Frankly, I I aspire to be able to upload this much content in one day. Because Jesus Christ, this is no doubt making him absurd amounts of money. Uh, if you are a fan of this guy, by the way, I guess enjoy getting milked for all the cash that your views are worth. Anyway, it's very funny. Because this guy, the quartering, broadly, is pretty well respected, you know? Like, he is currently probably the most popular culture war, anti-woke, anti-brown people in media, anti-women in media, anti-trans like trans people or gay people in media and stuff like that. He's the largest one making that content right now. He is, like, the by far the biggest in that community. But he's very, very broadly accepted and popular. I mean, even PewDiePie, uh, I believe, has said he's a fan of The Quartering. Um, though that was a while ago, and The Quartering has gotten a little bit more, like, shameless with his videos and thumbnails and titles recently. Like, it's a little bit more... Like, it's gotten to the point where I feel like it's pretty impossible for anyone to argue this isn't a conservative channel anymore. For a very long time, it was financially beneficial for the quartering to pretend like he was a centrist. And so that's what he did. He pretended to be a centrist. And uh, that, you know, this is like during probably like 2019, that area. He pretended to be a centrist who was just making fun of what, you know, he thought people cared about, you know, being discussed. And now in 2022, when the right is far more, you know, robust online, culturally speaking, it's pretty obvious he feels far more brave to come out overtly with what his political opinions are. He knows that there is enough of an audience here for him to shill this uh, content to, you know, for them to watch it. Though, I want to compare this to somebody who had a very similar explosive rise, um, mask, like mask coming off reveal, and then explain what happened to him. Uh, ironically enough, both of these individuals go by the name of Jeremy, and both of them are overweight neckbeards. So, you know, there's there's actually even more crossover here than just the grift or the politics involved. Now, we have covered no bullshit or no BS as he ended up rebranding himself for a very, very long time. I, I like to bring him up as one of the shi most sh the perfect shining examples of what conservative content really is at its core you see no bullshit is conservative propaganda without any of the charisma or any of the intelligence needed to tell a good lie and make effect and tell good lies effectively so this is basically what happened with uh, no bullshit so if we look at his videos and we go back to like most popular you can see that his most popular video is from five years ago. 2.9 million views. Sweden's feminizing boys with genderless schools. Avengers Endgame cast hates Brie Larson. Why Apple is bullshit now. Far Cry 5 confuses SJWs because conservatives aren't monsters. Buzzfeed lies about black inventions. SJW shocked over ancestry DNA test. BuzzFeed Try Guys are low testosterone betas. Adam ruins the Joe Rogan experience. Why men won't date millennial white women like Hannah Witten. Rice Gum's failed response to iDub's content cop. Oh no! Wait, so this right here is actually a very good example of back when uh, iDub's was sort of like a, a edgelord kind of guy. These types absolutely rode his cock. They would throat his fucking cock harder than anybody. All of these people, all of these grifting fucks, 
loved iDubs. They worshipped that motherfucker. They considered him, him, Filthy Frank, Max Mofo, and anything for views might as well have been the founding fathers of edginess on YouTube. Might as well get a fucking hammer and chisel and carve their faces into the side of a mountain like Mount Rushmore, okay? I, I feel like it's it's worth bringing this up because all of these people now call iDubs a simp and say that he's a cuck because he got married and he no longer says the n-word. Pretty much. Uh, here's uh, saying Family Guy based, unironically, is what this video is. Uh, calling out vegan gains, I, I guess that's fine. And you know, most of this content, his most popular content, as you could tell, is not necessarily overt political, like, right-wing propaganda. At least in the time that it was uploaded. Look at this most popular video here, Sweden Hates Boys. This came out during the height of the anti-feminist movement. This During this time, no bullshit claimed he was a centrist. And he was just interested in, uh, you know, just calling out dumb people, right? He's no bullshit. He just calls out bullshit, right? And uh, at the time, during that, that age, there was this sort of very easy out to any of the iffy sides of, the pro of what you say by just saying, oh no, I'm not that. Trust me. And then everyone just kind of believed it, you know? Like someone would say... The Jews control Hollywood, and that's a bad thing, and they're pushing this narrative, yada yada. And you'd be like, holy shit, that person's a Nazi. And they'd be like, no, I'm not. And then uh, everybody watching would be like, yeah, he just said he's not a Nazi. What the fuck? You, you can't just call people Nazis. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're worse than a Nazi now. Um, and that was basically how that conversation would generally go online. Uh, you could basically just say, no, I'm not, to any accusation of uh, of having problematic beliefs and people would just kind of defend you. And nowadays you have to use the it's a joke defense, but that's what it was back then. And uh, at that time, sort of distancing yourself from what the reality of the propaganda was, was very, very important. Like, very, very, very important. But over time, and I think this becomes obvious when we look at, like, his newer content, which has way less views and just fucking died out, once he started to get more overt with his political propaganda and lazier with his content, frankly, I'm not going to say that it was just him becoming more overt with his right-wing political propaganda with, like, calling out Biden and shit like that. Oh, he called out Richard Spencer for supporting Biden and the left. The most obvious grift ever. Um, anyway, very obviously, he just kind of went full conservative grifter type and went from getting millions and hundreds of thousands of views on his channel to getting very, very few. And uh, if you watch his videos, you can see they are functionally exactly the same as a as a quartering video, you know? Like, let's look at it, you know? Here's, uh, here's no bullshit. Let's take a Hello look. Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we return to talking about plus size. Plus size is the term used for these sorts of larger than life people and it's come I swear on my life that I have not done anything to this video to slow it down. You know what I think he's actually done? I think he's in post slowed down his video recording just slightly to stretch it out to 10 minutes. There's just something about the draw of his voice and how slow it is that doesn't sound natural. Like it sounds like he was speaking at an already slow, you know, tone or at a slow pace and then slowed it down like 5% digitally is this the quivering no this is no bullshit in fact let's go ahead and look at uh, the this is his content right before his channel just kind of crashed and burned and female and everything for example when they go to hollywood they're like hey there's not enough female directors there's not enough black people in this movie but what you start to notice is they don't care about it the other way around when there's more female models in their industry or in the adult entertainment industry there's more that's enough i think you guys get the point so no Bullshit does content that, I mean, let's go ahead and click on, on, on the quarterings video. Let's see how similar it is. Well, Jeremy here from the quartering. I want to thank everyone for tuning in this week. I know it was a Mermaidian games, you know, rings of powering kind of week. Not a lot of diversity in the news, but hopefully next week will be a little more spicy. I do want to follow up 
many of you, uh, these people were booty blasted that uh, I was being successful and uh, offering. They thought it would because we were giving away random amounts of cash and some of the orders. They thought that was a big way to. So it's the same fucking shit. It's the same shit. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that two people who do content in a similar format, like person on the corner of the screen talking about a thing in the main part of the screen, that's what I do as well. Let's be real. The quartering isn't really a personality. N neither was no bullshit. The reason why I want to draw these very, very strong comparisons between these two is because years ago, YouTubers and the internet figured out that this guy was a brain-dead idiot, a grifter who was just milking them for every bit of money they were worth by peddling hate propaganda to them. And, you know, his channel just fucking died. His channel just fucking died. This guy, on the other hand, who makes content that is literally exactly the same, there's no personality to this guy. People only watch this guy to hear their same political opinions regurgitated to them. Like, nobody watches a no no bullshit video because they think this guy is like a charismatic dude who they're a fan of you know like no one was going to this guy's twitch streams you know like what, what do you mean anyway and uh you know the same goes for no for uh the quartering right like nobody gives a shit about the quartering people watch him because he you know he basically vomits up the same political ideology they already already agree with um right back at them and that's what they want it's like nice background music for them or like background noise for them with that said, though, um, there is one big difference between the quartering and no bullshit, and it's really time. Time and, I think, just a little bit of intelligence. You see, no bullshit now actually works for the quartering's, uh, like, game review. Like, it's actually more so, like, basically what the quartering does in his videos, complaining about woke stuff in games and media, only on a website. The Quartering's got, like, a website where it's, like, articles about that kind of stuff. I believe No Bullshit now writes for it, along with Rags, I believe, too. Um, and a few of the other, uh, a few of the other classics, uh, also making that content on there. Regardless, though, I think it's time and a small amount of intelligence. You see, No Bullshit didn't really end up going anywhere, as you can tell. The Quartering actually has invested his money into starting a business, at the very least a coffee brand, um, and despite literally being uh, exiled, like, The Quartering's initial claim to fame, the way that he initially got his name out there, was when he was kicked out and banned from all Magic the Gathering tournaments for sexually harassing cosplayers. He would uh, sexually harass women that would do cosplay, and so he was banned from all of the events. That got his name out, in, in, you know, out into the stratosphere. Everyone knew about him. He started making videos, and I mean, naturally, you can imagine what types of people flocked to his channel and gave him his initial boost of viewership. Now, you see, the vast majority of people sub to the quartering now don't even know about that. They don't even know. They just found his videos and they're recommended, and they think, oh, I don't like that they made the mermaid black, too. I'm going to watch this video. And they don't know this guy's history. They don't know, like, what this guy was all about. In both cases, they're making the same content. They're grifting. And so on, so on, right? Um, the quartering's clearly smarter. Smart enough to invest and actually have a business outside of his uh, very, no doubt, going to be short-lived grifting about media, like, culture war shit career. Um, so at the very least, he's got something to do after the fact. He's smart enough to keep a veneer of intelligence up. You see, no bullshit made a variety of mistakes. One of the biggest ones was agreeing to debate. No bullshit debated Destiny more than once. No bullshit debated several people more than once. And every time he got his ass beat. It really harmed his, you know, his reputation. It really exposed to a lot of people how stupid he was. And not just how stupid he was, but how stupid what he stood for was. How stupid just getting mad about, like, fucking brown people in media was. It, it just sort of put into perspective how stupid of a person you have to be to care about that shit. The problem is that, you know, that happened back in, like, 2017, 2016. And now we've got a whole new batch of youngins coming onto the internet. And uh, they want to be politic politically rebellious, and uh, they weren't around for all that stuff. 
The funny thing is, though, they're going to have a very similar awakening, and I I really do look forward to the huge batch of videos that are going to come out in, like, 2023. I'd actually say 2024, probably. The big batch of videos that are going to come out in 2024 and 2025 called um, How I Left the, uh, the Andrew Tate TikTok rabbit hole or alt-right rabbit hole or whatever. It's going to be something along those lines. Um, it's going to happen. The internet and cult and the general culture in general has always just kind of like, you know, kind of swung back and forth and who's at the most popular, who's got the most like push culturally. And, uh, yeah. How I left Hustlers University, how I escaped, how I stopped being a top J. Anyway, uh, with that said, though, the quartering uh, very quickly realized that he cannot do debates. He got destroyed once or twice by Destiny. Um, he got, like, whooped once by the serfs. He ran away from me. And uh, from there, like, yeah, he, he ran, he's running away from uh, Keffels. Yeah, he, just, he knows not to debate. He knows that nothing that he actually stands for, nothing that he complains about, nothing that... Anything that he discusses in his videos matters enough for him to defend it. He cannot. If somebody in a call with him pushes him back on him for any of the numerous controversies he's had, uh, any of the lack of merit to any of his content, um, frankly, just the lack of humanity he has um, just as a person, he knows that's going to harm his bottom line. And all he cares about is money. M money. And so he keeps grifting. And people just keep on shoveling it his way. And you know what you can do? Chat, do you know what you can do to combat that? There's only one way that you can stop that from happening. And that's by liking my scream. I almost said scream. Liking my stream, subscribing to my YouTube channel, and hitting that bell icon to turn on all notifications, following my social medias, which are all linked down below, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and my fan Discord, as well as perhaps even if you've got the money for it and you feel extra super duper base today, coming to my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, making an account and perhaps even contributing to the white genocide by subscribing, gifting a sub to somebody else or multiple other people, or maybe even just donating if you're just feeling generous and just want to toss a coin to your streamer. With that said, though, no matter how any of you support me, I really do appreciate it. You guys are so goddamn kind. If you watched all the way up until this point, Comment down below, uh, basement piss, so I know that you watched all of this. Because uh, I will be reading the comments, and I want to know how many of you actually watched the entire video. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.